Okay, so these cuts were made by my Yanagiba, my working knife, and they are 270mm length blade. And the cut is a little bit cleaner because they are kitchen knives. Look at this. These cuts were made by SNG. Blade under 3 inches long. Excellent. Thank <laughs> you. 
So, what I am doing here is actually pretty simple. Instead of following the original secondary bevel angle, like this, I intentionally lay down the knife further more so that I will be grinding behind the edge, shoulder, some people call it. So at first it looks like this. This is how knife is touching on the surface of the stone. Eventually, the edge comes in contact with the stone face. And starts forming the bar. Then, I flip the knife and start grinding the other side. So, just like before, the edge is not really touching the stone at first. Eventually, the edge will come in contact with the stone face again, and then start forming the bar. So roughly 90%, 85 to 90% of the grinding job is in this stage, done with coarse stone. In this particular case, Atoma 150. There is a good reason why you should use coarse stone. You could do it with 1000, for example, spending hours and hours wasting your precious time and also wasting your stone. Not only that, the longer you take at this stage, the more chance you have making mistakes and getting impatient and, you know, the worst thing that can happen to you in this stage is probably getting impatient because of using the wrong grip stone. So it's taking too long, getting impatient, and you end up tilting up the knife. So you are actually defeating the purpose, the whole purpose of 
regrinding, thinning down the edge. So use coarse stone. If you don't have one, well, save up and buy with your next paycheck. It's worth it. In the next video, I will explain logically why you want to thin down the edge, why you want to regrind knife like this. And also I am going to make a video probably next next one how to regrind lever. Especially a well used kind of getting convex edge lever. One fifty down. <laughs>